In this video, I will discuss the legacies of Soviet nationality policy. Bottom line up front, this policy gave some ethnic or national groups territorial designations within the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union had a tricky time dealing with issues of ethnicity and nationalism for two reasons. First, it inherited a multi-ethnic territory, as well as a definition of the Russian nation that combined ethnic, linguistic, and geographic characteristics. This would be challenging on its own, but the USSR also espoused a pan-national communist ideology, where a person's primary identity was not meant to be ethnic, but class-based. So it was never really clear whether Soviet nationality policy was meant to protect or eliminate national groups. But what is clear is the impact the policy of institutionalizing national groups had. It enhanced ethnic or national sentiment in general, as well as its identification with specific geographic boundaries. So with that note, what was the actual policy? The Soviet Union had a multi-tiered federal system where some federal entities, including the most important, the republic level, were associated with specific ethnic groups. Each tier had different rights and independent institutions. This does get a bit in the weeds, so please bear with me. The top level was Union Republics. These are sometimes also called titular republics because they're named after ethno-national groups. These are the 15 republics of the Soviet Union, the SSRs that became states when it collapsed. Within the Union Republics, there were three administrative units, autonomous republics, oblasts, also called krais in the Russian Republic, and autonomous oblasts. With the exception of Russia, which did not have an independent communist party, these republics all had a full set of independent institutions, including parliaments, party structures, bureaucracies, etc. On the next level down, autonomous republics are regions, here in orange, that received special status based on ethnic or geographic distinctiveness. Autonomous republics included regions that later tried to break away, like Abkhazia in Georgia and Chechnya in Russia, as well as regions that did not like Nakhchivan in Azerbaijan and Tatarstan in Russia. Oblasts and Krais, there is no real legal distinction between them, are administrative regions that have local governments, but less independence than an autonomous republic. Autonomous oblasts were similar, but while oblasts were just administrative divisions, autonomous oblasts were associated with ethno-national groups. Underneath oblasts and republics came okrugs. As with oblasts, they are mostly just geographic borders, but several autonomous okrugs were created to represent indigenous populations in northern Russia. All of these subdivisions had local governments and party structures, and the main distinction between them was the legal authority to take independent action. What determined what territory a group got? Mostly it was group size and geographic concentration. These were not intended to be proto-states, even though that's what they ended up being. This also did change over time in the Soviet Union where early on, geographic boundaries would be reshuffled in order to minimize the influence of any individual group, and later on, they ended up becoming much more reified and influential. In some cases, though, notably in Nogorno Karabakh, the status of being an oblast or republic was controversial. As an autonomous oblast, Karabakh did not have the legal authority to secede from Azerbaijan and join Armenia. An autonomous republic would have had the ability to do so. These administrative units do still exist today, most notably within Russia. While there have been a couple of border shufflings and redesignation of oblasts to republics, the mix of ethnically designated and purely administrative subdivisions remains. The main legacy of this policy was a general association of borders and ethnicity, but imperfectly so. As Valerie Bunce noted in Subversive Institutions, Ethno-federalism both provided the formal structures upon which republics could build states and the justification for these states to use ethnicity to define their nations. The combination of this nebulous definition of a Russian nationality and clearly institutionalized definitions of other nationalities contributed to the border conflicts that arose with the end of the Soviet Union. 